Now, from across the Tri-States, this is KHQA Sports. Top of the evening, everybody, and welcome to Sports Final, where we've made it to Friday night on what started as a very dispiriting and disillusioning week. So I say you owe it to yourself to do something nice this weekend. And how about doing something nice for somebody else as well? Just pay it on forward. You know, sports is always a nice diversion from the ugliness of the real world. And tonight, we actually get to talk a little Friday night football, even if it's just a dress rehearsal. Western Illinois, the Bruce Craddock spring game. Bob Nielsen's first time through. His team trying to demonstrate right here. We'll start you off with some offense in this one. Nico Watson, he is a big, ferocious man, and he runs like it right there, picking up the first down through traffic at that point. Later in the drive, Javon Williams looking to Kyle Robeski for the big gain on the sidelines. Robeski, two catches on the night, 47 yards to lead all wide receivers. That drive would end up with this guy, Nathan Knuffman, the pride of Camp Point Central, booting home a 32-yard field goal for the offense as they put three points on the board. Then it's Hayden Northern in a quarterback, going to dump off underneath right here to Trent Snyder. This is going to turn into a nifty little gain as well. Western looking for offensive playmakers. Maybe Trent Snyder might fill that role in the red zone. Then it's Northern again, this time to Scott Simpson, not the golfer, the tight end for the touchdown at that point. Mr. Knuffman adds the PAT, and the offense looks pretty darn good tonight. No final score yet on this one, but both sides of the ball look pretty decent. And we'll look forward to the summer when we'll see the real Western, Le Western Illinois Leathernecks ramping things up with the entire squad in and see how much progress they fare and how far along they've come. Meanwhile, in soccer tonight, for the second time in 24 hours, a hat trick for Teresa Sheffer. In fact, she scored nine goals in less than 24 hours as Hannibal wins at the Lady Zizzer Classic tonight, beating the host school 7 to nil. Hannibal on a roll now, 12 and 3 on the season. I believe that is shutout number 12 on the year as well. Also, Quincy Notre Dame breaking through tonight to beat Rochester. It's the first loss of the season for Rochester. Cassidy Foley with a golden goal in that one. Julie Raby with the shutout. So nice work there by the Lady Raiders. Quincy Notre Dame softball at home tonight, taking on Rockridge. Down 2 to nothing after the top of the first. Here come the Lady Raiders ready to unleash. Jenny Pollock starts it off with the RBI double off the wall, which nearly got out for a home run, and that just let the floodgates open in the first inning. Mary Beth Hugenberg, RBI single right there with a little uh, lob wedge, if you will, to short center field. That scores a run. Hannah Brecht, steps, Hannah Brecht steps up, I should say, knocks this one into center field for another run. Kendra Gingenbacher going to step in, do her part right here with another little gap wedge, this time out to short left field, scores a run. Aubrey Venverlo, one of 14 batters in the bottom of the first. Eight runs in all in the frame for Q&D. They never really looked back in this ball game, end up winning over Rockridge. Final count in this one was 11 to eight. Earlier in the night though, Quincy Notre Dame struggling and losing against Peoria Notre Dame. Six to one was the final in that ball game. We had more softball tonight at Beardstown. Kind of a strange game between Grigsville Perry and Beardstown, bottom of the first. Jill Harris going to go to work for the Beardstown Lady Stripes in this one. Singling to left center field, Claire Hardwick would score for the Lady Tigers. Made it one to nothing at that point. Tigers up three to nothing. Here comes Grigsville Perry. McKenzie Vos with a single to drive home a run. Cut that deficit to three to one. Then Allison Bingham, she's going to drive in two more to tie this thing up. Actually, push the Tornadoes ahead with this RBI single, a two-run single as GP jumps out four to three. Bottom of the third, here comes Jill Harris stepping to the plate, and she is going to do some work right here. This is a solo home run from the former Student Athlete of the Week right here. She's a good one. The Tigers trailing at this point six to four, however, in this ball game. You know what, though? Beardstown goes nuts in this ball game, ends up scoring 11 unanswered runs in the final two innings. And as we had it, Beardstown ends up winning this thing 15 to six would be your final on the night. Limited day of baseball highlights. We can tell you a couple of scores tonight. Grigsville Perry winning at home 23 to nothing over Pleasant Hill. Mitchell Main with a grand slam in that one. And for the first time this season, Palmyra tastes defeat, losing at Macon by the final count of 9-5 to five tonight. The Macon Tigers now drop Palmyra to 9-1 and one on the season. Well, there's a certain artistry to hitting a pitch baseball, as anyone who has ever tried can most certainly attest. Edwardsville native Ian Sykes has spent the last four years honing that particular craft, hitting the baseball, in America's hometown, both at Hannibal LaGrange College and during a stint last summer with a Hannibal Caveman. And he's done so at a level that may well allow him to continue to do so past college baseball as well, which could lead to a very unique choice down the road between two seemingly diametrically opposed vocations. 
He does. He, he's tough. He works hard. He's always going to give you his best, and, and he loves to get dirty, um, and he can really hit, too. And he's leading the NAI in doubles per game right now. And he, his power numbers aren't up as far as home runs, but he, the guy's been hitting 400 all year, and to have that many doubles, he's, he could definitely do it at the next level. There is no tougher, grittier job in all of baseball than wearing the tools of ignorance behind the plate. Rarer still these days is the catcher who is a weapon rather than a liability with a bat in hand, which kind of makes Ian Sykes a bit of a baseball throwback. But before you start drawing the classic old school comparisons, consider this. While we know what a Pudge Fisk or a Johnny Bench could do behind the dish, relative to Ian Sykes, would it not be fair to ask, what could the Hall of Famers have done behind an easel? Uh, well, I've been, been drawing my whole life, been, uh, just been kind of doing art stuff my whole life, and uh, took up painting probably two and a half years ago, right when I got here to HLG. Um, just really started enjoying painting, um, just kind of have an eye for it, um, enjoy working with colors and um, kind of creating uh, manipulative images with color. So that's just kind of discovered in the last two years, I guess. And he's a complex guy. He, he, uh, we, don't, we don't have a lot of three-hole hitters that are, that are art majors. Yeah, it's kind of a weird combination, but um, I love doing it. So, And clearly, Ian's pretty darn good at it, crafting mostly images of sports figures and pop culture icons. On this particular day, singer Marcus Mumford from the band Mumford & Sons that has made his work highly collectible on campus. Every time somebody sees his artwork, they want it. They, they, want, they ask about it, they want to know who did it, and uh, they're interested to, to find out if they can get their hands on some. So I think he's got a good future no matter which way he goes. And for a guy charged with the cosmically befuddling task of hitting a baseball, something that even the best on the planet statistically fail at in more than half of their at-bats, the four to six hours Ian spends on his art have an added benefit in his other hobby. I, I love doing it. And I, actually, last week, just kind of took some time to paint, just uh, kind of escape from uh, school and a and, uh, frustrating week of baseball. We try so hard to, uh, to impress upon our guys how important academics is and character, and we try to recruit for character. When you get a guy like Ian, um, other guys just fall in line, and, and uh, it makes it easier for us to find more guys like him. So he's been a godsend to us. His character level is really high and it really spreads throughout our team. He's been a, a captain for us this year and a really good leader.